This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. What's up, entrepreneurs? John Marco here, and welcome to the Seller Process Podcast. Today, we'll dive deep into a point-based system to effectively validating your product idea. And we brought to the mic Tony Boffa to share his knowledge with us. Tony started working as a high school teacher and in the chemical industry for 30 years before starting his Amazon business in 2016, when his Chinese chemical suppliers was, was looking for help to sell scented candles in US. So he, in 2017, founded TNH Candles, which is now a seven-figure brand on Amazon.com. In 2018, he co-founded Builder and helped over 200 Amazon, Walmart, and Shopify sellers launch thousands of products. Builder now has 20 plus specialist staff in US, Australia, China, and Philippines, providing A to Z services for Amazon, Walmart, and Shopify sellers. Tony Chow. Hello, Chow. How are you, John Marco? I'm doing great, Tony. So guys, to, just to let you know, me and Tony, we know each other since a while, and uh, he created, he, he's, he's been helping lots of sellers launch their products on, on Amazon. And uh, he created, in order to make uh, an efficient work with this agency, he created a, a validation process based on a, on, a, on a system with 25 points. What that means is basically he assigns different amount, amounts of points to each metric in order to validate the, whether the product it's a, it's a good idea or not. So if it passes the test, it's a green light, otherwise it's a, it's a red light. So today we'll, we'll go through this system and, and learn from Tony on how he, he validates the products in order to know whether our product it's a, it's a green light or a red light. So Tony, to begin with, why did you create this uh, 25 point system and uh, what were the benefits of using it? Sure, uh, John Marco. Well, I think, first of all, anyone that is selling on Amazon or have sold on Amazon especially knows how important, how critical it is to find the right product. Uh, I have worked with many, many sellers um, who have been very successful, some who have been not so successful, and I put down about 70 to 80% of their success being due to product selection. I really think it's that high. So the importance of product selection cannot be um, understated. So when we were looking at it, a lot of sellers would come to me and say, oh, Tony, what's the best product? Which is the best way to get it? You know, how do you know it's a good product? It's a very common question. So there is uh, a number of methods out there. Um, some people just use a competitor analysis. Some people do a, a market analysis. What this 25-point thing does is combine it all. Um, for me, my philosophy is for successful product selection, there are four pillars of success. One, and it's going to be obvious, but here's what they are. One is high demand. Two is low competition. Three is that it's highly profitable, high margin. And number four is reliable supply, right? So they're the four pillars of success. So what this 25-point plan does is try to cover, it can't cover it all, but it covers at least the demand, the high demand, and the low competition, right? The profitability, that's another step. So this is like the first two steps of defining what you would call a good product to sell on Amazon or Walmart and so on. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's where it's come from. Okay, makes sense. I, I believe it's uh, it's it's necessary to to have a system in order to really validate the a product idea because definitely I, I totally agree with you. That's 70, 80 percent, yeah, of, of your success on Amazon, and uh, those four pillars actually are, are basically the non-negotiable, right? So basically the things that must be there because Absolutely. obviously, guys, we will never find the perfect product, right? But at least we need to have certain metrics, certain factors that must be there. Otherwise, we cannot move forward. And that's what the this validation pro process aims to do. So before we, we dive deeper into, into the specific metrics of this uh, uh, va validation system, I'm curious to understand uh, you first uh, you first search for products, right, and and come up with several ideas. So at, at what point of your product research 
do you start using this uh, this uh, system? Because I, I believe you, you will not go through this this system, which it, it would take some time to to uh, to to go through for every product ideas you have. So when when is the time that you start using the the sheet? Sure. So our first starting point, obviously, we talk with the seller, and the seller would have an idea in mind of perhaps what category they want to work in. They might want you know sports and leisure. They might want home products, whatever it is. Um, and if they have a particular category or an idea of what they want, um, we can apply this system straight away. Some of them will say, what do you think of this product? And we'll do a quick analysis and we'll go through all the stages to see whether it's a pass or fail. But typically, if they're not sure, if they want to say, oh, look, I think I want something in the home area, we'll start with Helium 10. We rely very heavily on Helium 10. Some people don't know Helium 10 or don't use Helium 10, but we love it because it has so many great tools. And one of the tools they have is called Black Box. So Black Box is a, a product searching tool. It's really, really good to help you identify, as a starting point at least, products that uh, you can filter in such a way where you can identify products which are fairly low competition but still strong demand. So it's a starting point, Helium 10 Black Box. I understand. Okay, got it. So then once you once you find the, the product idea that you think it's it's uh, it's a worth to, to then, go further. Then, correct. Once we identify a product idea uh, or a product, maybe a product in this particular niche that, that looks like it's got potential on black box, we then apply the 25-point plan. So would you like me to go through the 25-point plan briefly now? Yeah, got it. So yeah, for sure, for sure. Let's now di okay. dive deeper into into the, the metrics. Sure. So we'll, we'll yeah. see. And this is really challenging because you can't see it, but I'm sure we can give the, a link uh, to, your, to your listeners and they can see it for themselves afterwards. But um, it's made up of a number of different scores based on, supply, uh, on demand and competition. So one of the things we do, first of all, is the obvious things we use is to find out things like search volume. What would be the search volume for one of the main keywords? So if we take an example of, let's say, um, baby shower boxes, baby shower boxes. These are like baby gifts that you have when the baby's born and something like this, right? So you would look up, say, um, what is the search volume for that? So you would indicate that as an idea. We don't measure it, but it gives us an idea. Then what we do is we use another Helium 10 tool called X-Ray. You're familiar with X-Ray? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So most people who have used uh, Helium 10 or, you know, most people that are Amazon sellers would know X-Ray. So it gives a very good analysis at a snapshot with a particular keyword, let's say baby shower boxes, and it'll show you the first page of results. In other words, the top sellers on page one uh, and show there a number of uh, good information. For example, it will show you their sales, their units sold, the number of reviews, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the first metrics we have, we call it a seven and seven. This is something I borrowed from someone else who uses it. And this is just one test. So the seven and seven means that Seven out of the te top 10 sellers have more than $7,500 of sales per month, so the demand is strong, and seven out of 10 of them have less than 75 reviews, so that the um, competition is relatively low, because reviews are so important. In other words, if you have, a, if you have competition there with good, good demand, that is more than $7,500 a month, and uh, low reviews, it's going to be easier to beat, Okay. If you know if you come up against uh, sellers that have got thousands of reviews, it's so much harder. There is a direct correlation of sales with reviews. So we look, that's a way to check out the demand and competition. So we give that a score. That's number one, right? Okay. That, got okay. It, got it. Any okay. questions that's so far? Interesting. So the seven and seven is the first test. So yeah. basically, you assign uh, you assign up to two points, right? If if they use yeah. these two tests, correct. One is correct, demand. and we assign two points for that. So this is two points out of twenty five, right? So if you get um, if you get a point, if seven out of ten of them have more than seven and a half thousand dollars in sales per month, and another point if seven out of ten of them have less than seventy five reviews. Okay, but I'm I'm yep. curious about now. You know, since since the Amazon started with the request review button. You know, yes. most people get get 
lots of more reviews, right? Because they don't need people don't need to they, they just need they can just rate the product, no no need to write down a, a full review. So people have seen uh, a, a spike in the number of reviews. So do you think still these seventy five reviews it's uh, it's applicable? Because I, I I think it depends also in the in the marketplace, right? In the in yep. the US there there is more there are more reviews and in the in Europe there are less. So absolutely. So you're right. This is based on US. I should have stipulated that. But you're right, actually. Uh, when we did this a couple of years ago, things have changed a lot in two years. So we might have to review the reviews because 75 is quite low. You're right. And it's very rare for, for um, any product to get a two, uh, two scores or two points for that one. You're right. 75 is low, especially for, for page one. So, but, you know, it's a test. We have seen it a couple of times, but you're right. It's very rare. We might have to change that to maybe maybe 100 or 150, we don't know, but you get the point of it. The idea is to check how competitive it is, right? Exactly. That's one measure. Exactly. The next one is um, whether it passes, the first paid pass is $300,000 in sales. So why $300,000? It was fairly arbitrary, but what we saw on average is that if there were at least, you know, if there's 20 products on there and they're getting at least, um, you know, $15,000 a month in sales, then if they get, that's a total of $300,000 a month, that's, you know, $4 million a year amongst 20 sellers, that's pretty good, right? If That means the demand is pretty good. So that's purely a measure of demand. In other words, if you've got the top 20 sellers and the total sales amongst 20 sellers is, say, maybe 20000 or 50000 it's you're not going to make a lot of money out of it. It's low demand product. So you get a point, you add another point if you're over 300000 all right? Just uh, as a reminder for people that are, are listening, that uh, this, these metrics that we're giving are um, the, the ones that Tony set in his spreadsheet. But obviously, you know, everybody has different targets, different uh, goals for their products. So the, the point here is to, is to give you a system that you can use based on points that helps you with, with validating your product. Then the exact, the, the exact metrics that you are going to use those can be changed based on your preferences, based on 100%. how aggressive you are, for example. If, if you're fine with getting, let's say, several small products, then you, you, can, you can go down with this, uh, with this metrics. You, you, can, you can use smaller metrics. Or Absolutely. if you want to be more aggressive and, and you, know, you want to make sure that you find you know, a home run product, then, then you, you got you to gotta put your, your metric much more uh, strict and, and you, know, you, you got to shoot to the, to the moon for, for, this, for this metric. So, so that's just to give you a, a system that you can use and implement in your business. And then you can tweak with, with your metrics that, the, the, that you prefer. All right, well, then let, no, let's move absolutely. on. What's, what's next? Uh, in the... Yeah, so the next one, as you said, it's a guide. But this, this has worked well for us, but absolutely you can change the numbers. So the next one we look at is how many uh, of the top sellers have over a thousand reviews. There's a magical thing that I've noticed over the years as a seller, and that is when you get to 100 reviews, uh, something magical happens. Suddenly you get more sales. It's true, you know, it really is. Mm -hmm. When you get to a thousand reviews, I believe the Amazon flywheel really kicks in. You've heard of the Amazon flywheel where you just start to get automatic reviews. It depends on the category, but if there are three sellers with more than a thousand reviews, oh boy, it's almost impossible to beat them, right? And you'll see that the big sellers are there. So we give a point. Um, we get three points if there are no sellers with a thousand reviews. In other words, all of the top sellers have less than a thousand. We give it three points. If there's only one seller with more than a thousand reviews, we give you one point. If there are um, if there are more than one uh, seller with uh, more than a thousand reviews, no points, right? Because that's just a measure of how tough it's going to be. If, if you've got two or three or four sellers with over a thousand reviews, oh boy, that, that to me is tough competition. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. In yeah. most markets, that's uh, there. There is a direct correlation with sales and reviews. Although, although we will talk about maybe this in another in another. Uh, actually, we do have another episode talking about this, like how yeah. reviews relate to to sales. But uh, in this Very case, much. yeah, for for sure, it's it, it is a measure of demand of of competition that you should take. Yeah, Absolutely. Take care of. And another one we do to, as a measure of competition, look, you can't escape it. You can't escape the fact that on Amazon, two of the top reasons people buy products on Amazon, number one is selling price. You can't, a recent survey said 82% uh, of buyers, the number one reason for choosing a product was price, right? So you can't escape that. The number two reason is reviews, and you can't escape social proof, right? So that's why we put a lot of emphasis on reviews. So the next metric we do is we look at the average reviews. In other words, um, they, you can measure the average reviews on X-ray, 
And if the average reviews is um, less than 80, um, then we give it three points. If it's uh, less than uh, 500, then we give you one point. That's the average reviews per seller. Okay. So that's another measure of competition. So if the average reviews per seller is over 500, you know, you know, amongst the top 20 sellers, you know you're up against a lot of competition before you start. Got it. Okay. So in that yeah. case, you get zero points in the sheet. Yeah. If, if there are more okay. than more, more than, uh, if the average is more than 500, yeah. The next one is the average price. Now, price is, you know, uh, an interesting one. There's no doubt the cheaper your product, uh, the less profitability, number one, and number two, the more competition generally, the more competition. People like to say you, they like to be in a sweet spot between about $20 and $50. So we say that, okay, if your, pri if your average price uh, overall among the top sellers is more than $20, well, we'll give you a point for that because at least it's not under $20 where you're going to make, it's going to be very hard to make profit, right? And if it's more, if the average price among the top sellers is more than $35, we'll give you two points. It's, it's a, a sort of a rough way of getting an idea of profitability. You know, the higher the price, the more likely you are to make profit, right? We know that a third goes to Amazon um, and a third goes to your supplier, so you get a third. So I'd rather have a third of $40 than a third of $15, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's where most of the bigger sellers are going to. Like everybody started with uh, maybe uh, just just because of a matter of budget, you know, you start with uh, small products because they they just cost less and it's also less risky, right? If you if you uh, end up choosing the wrong product, you just gave up uh, a few thousand dollars, but if you if you go with a $50 product, then uh, your cost is going to be very high and it might be more risky. But if you know what you're doing, obviously, that's the best route, you know, because yeah. you, you obviously will make more profit. Absolutely. But yeah, absolutely. So that's where that comes from. The other one we look at is the ability to differentiate. Obviously, it's all about differentiation. If you're choosing a product, you don't want to have the same product as somebody else unless you, go, oh, you can do something better, right? So you can differentiate it from the top sellers, offer something better, whether it's a, a better feature or an accessory or something. So you have to look at that product. This is a bit subjective, but we will give it a, a zero, one or three. That is that if three points, if it's easy to differentiate, in your opinion, one point if it's maybe not so hard and zero points if it's going to be hard to differentiate. So one product I can think of because I was involved with it is a product called hemp oil. Now, hemp oil is massive demand, uh, but it's also completely saturated and there's no way to differentiate except for making it stronger or pretending that it's stronger, putting a label that says you've got 1,000 milligrams instead of 10 milligrams, or offering multi-packs. In other words, it's really hard to differentiate. Hemp oil is hemp oil, right? So that's a zero for me. Whereas uh, another type of product, maybe, for example, if I take, say, um, a scented candle, yeah, you can really do a lot of different things with it, with the fragrance, with the style, with the design, and so on and so forth. So that's a subjective thing, but differentiation is very important. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's really one of the most important. Yeah, it, it deserves uh, three points if you have it. Uh, otherwise, like r really, um, I, I would say I would say this might be like very uh, heavy, heavy um, placement in inside your your the, the decision. Yeah, if we could again. You can play with these figures. I mean, you could say you know if it's easier to different, you might give it five points instead, and so on. That that's fine. So yeah, like you said, John Marco, you can certainly play with the numbers, but the, you get the idea. That's that's a measure of differentiating, um, making yourself different, definitely making your, your product better. Okay, and the last one is, is what we put a lot of emphasis on, and I've changed this figure a few times, um, but I'm giving it more and more emphasis because I like it more and more. It's called a competitor cerebral analysis. Um, and for those of you that are familiar with Helium 10 that have followed it for a while, you would have seen it on a lot of the Helium 10 things. Uh, there's a lot of big sellers that use it. Um, we followed um, Brandon Young. I don't know if you know Brandon Young. I first saw him bring this up maybe two or three years ago, I think, maybe 2018 or 19. I can't remember. Uh, and we sort of modified it along there. But the idea of it is simply this, right? It works on keywords. And um, what you do is you use Cerebro, which is a reverse ASIN on, on products, and it identifies the top relevant keywords for that product. So what you do is you take the top 10 sellers, which you get from, from um, X-Ray, you then do an, uh, a reverse ASIN or a Cerebro on all of those 10, and what you do is you find the keyword that get them to page one. In other words, they have a score uh, where they're rated or ranked 
usually less than 30 or 40, which, because there's about 30 or 40 organic listings per page. And then the number of those top sellers that have a keyword, let's take, for example, say scented candles as a keyword. Now, if the top 10 sellers ha all have scented candles ranked in their Cerebro as reverse ASIN less than 30, then that would have a relevancy of 10, a very high relevancy. In other words, all the 10 sellers are using the keyword scented candles to rank to page one. So it's a very important keyword and it's highly relevant. So the, the premise behind this is that um, when you come up with a product, it's very, very hard to be totally inventive. The idea is to show Amazon that you are basically mapping your product against the top sellers. So we look at who the top sellers are, we look at the keywords they're using, and we use the Cerebro analysis to identify it. And then when you do all that and you work it out, it's quite, it takes quite a while to do, a good half an hour. Um, then you find which is what we call a high risk and a high opportunity or a low risk and a low opportunity. In other words, if um, most of the sellers have all of the keywords, then it's, it's a high risk, very high risk, because they've already got the keywords that you want. Um, if only uh, if less than three or four of them have uh, the top keywords, then it's a low risk. Um, and then the opportunity comes from the number of keywords. If they have more than 30 relevant keywords, then that's a high opportunity because that's a lot of keywords. The more keywords you have, the more demand, the more ways of finding your product. So that's a high opportunity. If there's only maybe 10 relevant keywords to your product, it's, it's going to be harder to find your product. There's not as many keywords, so the demand will be lower. So this covers a lot of things. This covers competition. It covers so the competitiveness of the product. It covers the demand of the product. So we give it a lot of weight. So if something is low risk and high opportunity, we give it 10 points. If it's medium for both, it's five points. If it's low on one of them, uh, then no points, okay? So it's, it's a very important way to measure. And some people use competitive Cerebro alone to identify whether it's worth going ahead. This is a, an important part of it. It's like you know, nearly half of the whole score. Um, the other things are very important as well, but we do put a lot of emphasis on this because we found it to be really accurate. Almost without fail, um, we found that people that use uh, competitor Cerebro and they've got a high risk, um, even if they've got a high opportunity, but if they've got a, a high risk, it's really tough. It's a tough market. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Definitely. So that's basically half of the points, almost half of the points goes to your keyword analysis, which which I, I agree. It has yeah. a lot of weight into the in, in the in the system because, uh, yeah, obviously, if if there are no enough keywords that you can you can work on and uh, then, then it's um it's a low opportunity and there is exactly. high risk in, in 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 joining that market in trying to to go through uh because uh because basically there is no space for you that's, that's correct that's, uh, exactly you have right. to reason in terms of keywords not in terms of product we're not selling a product we're basically selling a space in in a keyword that people type and so that is it's like real estate basically i i see i see it like real Spot estate exactly so you, right. people a... people search for for a term and uh, they find a page with lots of spots. It's like it's like a, a street with uh, with lots of shops. Basically, exactly if you right. if you can if you can have your shop in the in the best corner of the street, then you got you got clients entering in your shop. So that's the same thing. If you can get into page one in the high spots of page one, because actually now uh, with people with more and more people buying from mobile, uh, we we gotta think of. The high spots of page one Absolutely. because uh, mobile has has less real estate basically, so it has a smaller screen and it gives less uh, opportunity to to appear on page one. So we need to aim to to get to the first uh, sixteen spots basically in in a, in the keyword that we are targeting. Absolutely yeah, so right. Spot yeah, on. So I I agree. I agree that uh, it should have a, um, a high em emphasis the the keyword analysis. Right, well, I think so, the, I saw some figures somewhere, Gianmarco, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. um, I think it was uh, if you found the, if you were rated in the top three for the highest search and relevant keywords, you are always going to be in the top three, right? You're going to be a top three seller if you have the top three relevant and high search volume keywords for that product, right? You're always going to be in top three sellers. So it's so important being um, ranked in the top three for the high search volume relevant keywords. You're going to be a big seller, no doubt about it.
Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So guys, uh, remember that, you know, our promise for the Seller Process Podcast, it's always to, to make you um, to give you uh, either a template, um, a spreadsheet, uh, an SOP, or a checklist, something that you can implement, start implementing it right now after after you uh, listen to the podcast. So today, Tony shared with us his validation system for to to, to validate new products, and you you can get the copy of this validation system. It's a basically a spreadsheet that you can modify as you as you wish and use it in your own business. And you will find the link to download it in the show notes at the sellerprocess.com. So go find this episode and uh, and check the this uh, the link to download for free your spreadsheet. And and remember, these are just uh, indicative numbers. You can use your own numbers numbers and you, you can even assign more points to, to some uh, to some areas and less to other areas because maybe you think that's uh, that's better but keep in mind that this is the system used by by Tony for his company who helped uh, several several Amazon sellers to launch their products so it, it worked for him so it, it can work for you as well so Tony just the last question before we we say goodbye I want to understand What's what's the the common mistake that you have seen people making in using this this validation method, or in general, like validating their products? What's the most common mistake so that we don't make it? Okay, the most common mistake <laughs> with new sellers is is not doing this, is not doing any research, is going with their gut feel, or going with something they think, ah, oh, someone's selling a million dollars a year. I even if I get ten percent of that, that'll be fine doesn't work that way. You've got to do your research. You absolutely have to do. And this is just the first step. I could give you another five episodes, John Marco, about the next steps involved. So do your research. Absolutely, you must do your research. And this is only the first step of many. So don't jump in with gut feel or saying, oh, wow, you know, million dollar product. Oh, I only want 10%. That's 100,000. It doesn't work that way. It's absolutely. a bit all or nothing. Amazon is like that. Absolutely. And guys, remember, don't fall in love with your product, fall in love with your customer. That's really uh, something that uh, I really live by. I mean, it's, it's, my, it's my mindset in growing my business. And, uh, and definitely that, that's the way like everybody, every big seller is, is doing. So don't, don't just go for your gut feeling. Obviously, we, we need data to back up our decisions. And that's the way uh, advanced sellers like Tony do basically uh, don't uh, basically give, giving a number to to different metrics. Basically, it, tell, it, it takes out the the, the, the your your emotional uh, judgment basically, yep. and uh, and then you you will have a number to to uh, look at, and uh, if that's respect, if 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 the system it's it's built well, you just need to trust the system and follow the process and uh, and you you cannot really make mistakes uh, on that so uh, tony so then thank you thank you for being here and uh, obviously yeah we i i know you have a lot more to share so we we can have you here again uh, soon so yeah thank you again and uh, guys if you Good would pleasure. like to to reach tony uh, how how can they reach to you if they need yeah. your help well, you can go to our uh, website, which is just bilzar.com, B-I-L-Z-A-R.com, or just email me, tony at bilzar.com. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Tony, again. Guys, um, this, this was, go, go, remember to, to go download this, um, the free copy of the 25-point system to validate your product on the sellerprocess.com. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, Marco. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. Changemakers, I hope you enjoyed the show and learned something from the interview. i like to leave you with my favorite quote. Remember, we don't rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our systems. You will not reach your targets just because you set them. You will reach your targets because you have implemented systems in your business that allow you to reach those targets. Burn that in your mind. And what I'd like you to do is to go grab the free resources of this episode on the sellerprocess.com and work to keep systematizing your business and creating better processes. And I'll see you in the next episode.